Hello, everybody. The system has alerted me to the fact that we are live, and I am excited about being with you here this evening. Um, I am coming to you because this is this has been a very interesting time. We are living in some very interesting times. Some might say that we are living in very perilous times, but um, in spite of all of that, I do know that um, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I just simply believe that because that's who I am. I've, you know, people have called me a faith walker, so I'm just believing that uh, we all are going to get through this um, in due season. So don't grow weary in well doing. Um, for those of you that may not know, I'm Cheryl Lacey Donovan, and what we're going to be talking about here tonight are five ways to practice regular self-care, even if you don't think you have time. You have five ways that you can practice regular self-care, even if you don't think that you have time. And one of the reasons that I wanted to bring this forward is because I know that there are a lot of you out there who are entrepreneurs, you are business owners, you're ministry leaders, you're coaches. Um, and, you know, this, this has been uh, extraordinary, can be extraordinarily difficult because you have learned how, had to have learned how to pivot in order to still continue your business as usual in a time that is very different than any other time that we have known in the recent past. Uh, many of you have had to get on the technology bandwagon, whether you wanted to or not. Some of you have had to shift what you do from retail stores to online stores. Some of you have had to shift some of your in-person things that you were doing, whether it was coaching 101 or even group coaching, workshops, speaking engagements, things like that, that you may have normally been doing um, in person. Now you're having to do a lot of that virtually. So you've had to go out. You've had to try to find uh, different uh, platforms that you can use in order to make that happen. And it has not been easy. But the question that I ask you at this moment is, have you taken out time for your own personal self-care? And that is so, so, so important. And I would venture to believe that for many of you, you probably have not thought about that. You probably have not um, uh, even addressed the fact that during this, this time where you go, 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 that it may, may be a, a minute for you to sit back and just kind of relax and that this may be an opportunity for you to go in and to regroup and to find some different ways to do some things and to maybe sit down and reflect and be introspective and look at where you've come from in your business or in your ministry and where it is that you'd like to go. Instead, you've been in the rat race trying to figure out how am I gonna keep myself relevant? How am I gonna keep myself top of mind? And as a result of that, you've forgotten about your self-care. So tonight, we are going to look at that. We're going to talk about that. Um, so I'm going to give everybody a few more minutes to get onto the broadcast, um, and I am going to figure out a way to share my screen. Okay. So, right, like I said, I'm going to give everybody just a few more minutes to try to get onto the broadcast. Um, it is about 7.05 now, and I'm going to give maybe a couple more minutes until seven minutes after seven. Um, if you have any questions or anything that you would like to say, feel free to type that information in the comments section, and I'll try to answer those as soon as I possibly can. Um, again, this is an opportunity for everybody to kind of sit back and relax and think about where they stand with regards to their. Um, their self-care. So hopefully you guys can see my screen here. Hmm. <laughs> Giving everybody a few minutes. And hopefully all of this works the way that uh, I plan on working it. <laughs> this is the first time that I have uh, tried utilizing the share your screen with the new platform that I have been using. So hopefully you all are able to see that. Uh, let's see.
Okay. So without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get started. This again is five ways to practice regular self-care, even if you think you don't have time. For those of you that may not know who I am, I am Cheryl Lacey Donovan. I am an author who has won um, the African American Literary Awards uh, twice in the nonfiction category. I've also won an award with them for the Real Life Real Faith magazine. Um, I have been in the bestseller seller category before and have several books written with Peace in the Storm Publishing, as well as a couple of them that I have published myself through the imprint of Peace in the Storm, which is Imani Faith Publishing. I also do a lot of speaking engagements around the country. Uh, obviously, right now, they are not in person as they used to be. So many of them are... Um, via a virtual means. I just did a conversation with um, Black Parenting Magazine this past weekend. Weekend before last, I was with Pastor Lachey, and we talked a little bit about some of the things that are happening within our community. So um, I'm still very, very much available to do that in a virtual capacity. I am also a mentor and a certified master life coach. Um, I am a trainer. I do a lot of trainings. I'm an educator. Um, I teach medical students by trade um, and also teach a lot of other various trainings with regards to self-care, personal help, interpersonal skills, and what have you. I'm a lecturer and an ordained minister that resides in the city of Houston, Texas. So as we are preparing to get started, um, the first thing I want to do is to look at what a regular self-care routine looks like. What does a regular self-care routine look like? Well, first of all, a regular self-care routine allows you to refill your well of creativity. Here's the thing. When you get into a mode of autopilot, Things can become very redundant. They can become very overwhelming. They can become, um, in a lot of instances, very boring, <laughs> if, if, for lack of a better word. So when you don't practice your self-care, it can put you in a place where your creativity becomes dulled, where your creativity um, is not seen as much as it has been in the past. And it requires you to go back and really look inside yourself to identify those creative areas inside yourself that will allow you to be better and to do better. And, you know, one of the things that I want to do, I forgot to do this earlier, and I want to make sure that you guys see this. I want you to. I'm going to uh, run this really quickly because there is a handout that I want you guys to see. So I'm going to run that ticker at the bottom. If you want to get a copy of this handout because you're somebody that likes to take your notes as you go, then you can go to the website that is on the screen at the bottom, www.sherylspeaks.org. Um, it's some WordPress content. It's uploads and it's a webinar handout, five ways to practice regular self-care. Um, you can also inbox me. You can inbox me if you decide that you want to get copies of that uh, information go back and look at the uh, web webinar and then uh, go ahead and do it that way. All right, so let me go back to sharing my screen real quick. Okay, here we go. So what does that regular self-care routine look like? The second thing, it helps you to recharge your physical, spiritual, and emotional batteries. It helps you to recharge your physical, spiritual, and emotional batteries. And I'm sure all of you, if you don't own a car, you know somebody that does own a car. And you know that at some point, even when you have those Everlast batteries, when, even when you have those diehard batteries, and I may be actually um, uh, uh, aging myself here because they might call them something else now. But even with those batteries, the ones that don't require the water in them and the ones that say that they last forever, at some point, those batteries give out. And at some point, they need to be recharged and or replaced. And if you don't take out the time and be intentional about um, doing your self-care routine, then you'll find yourself in a rut and you'll find yourself right at the verge of burnout. OK, um, a self-care routine helps you to be more productive in a shorter daily time frame. So you're more productive because you've had an opportunity to detach yourself from your social media, an opportunity to detach yourself from um, any of the distractions that you've had 
with your business and whatever else is going on with you. Um, it also helps you become a better goal setter, a better goal setter, because now you're able to prioritize more effectively again, because you're not dealing with all of the distractions that are occurring. You're not dealing with all of the excess uh, stuff that may be happening in your life. So as a result of that, through that self-care routine, now you're able to look at things more clearly. Your eyes are open. The scales are removed from your eyes. You're able to visualize better and you're able to see your visions and dreams come to, through to manifestation. It allows you to refill your confidence well, your confidence well. And lastly, it helps you to boost your self-respect. It helps you to boost your self-respect. And I can tell you right now, um, if, if you are in a situation where you're working all the time and you're starting to feel guilty whenever you're not working, then that's a clear signal that you're on the fast track to burnout. And I know some people like that. Matter of fact, you know, if I could raise my hand up where you can see it right now, you'd know that through the spirit of transparency, there have been those times where, you know, I'm the kind of individual that feels like I need to be doing something that I always, you know, need to be active. And if I'm not, then I feel guilty, right? I feel guilty. And, but I had to come to a, a realization that um, being that way only leads to burnout. And it's a really quick way to get to that burnout, right? It's like you're on an airplane and you're up 30,000 feet and you're flying on the last fumes of jet fuel. And I don't know about y'all, but I, you know, if I'm in an airplane at 30,000 feet up in the air, I'm not trying to be flying on just some fumes. You know, I'm not trying, I need them to have plenty of gas in that tank to take me from point A to point B. But if we're honest with ourselves, sometimes we don't allow ourselves to be fully uh, fueled in order to do the best job that we can. And, and I liken it, one of the analogies I love to use is, is if you've ever poured, especially out of a teapot, you know, I love using that analogy out of a teapot and you keep pouring, you pour, you pour, you pour, and then you get down to the very bottom. Have you ever looked at what's in the bottom of that teapot? A lot of times it's a lot of sediment and that sediment at the bottom of the teapot is bitter, right? So think about, think about yourself. If you're pouring out and pouring out and pouring out and pouring out of that pot, right? And you never go back in to refill it. You never go back in to add more ice. You never go back in to add more sugar or whatever the case may be. Then what you're actually pouring out for the people, you're thinking you're doing a good thing. You're thinking them, you're feeding them the correct way, but you're, you're pouring out bitter sediment. What you're giving them is not actually helpful at all for them. It's actually a bitter, leaves a bitter taste. And you, you're really not giving them the best of who you are. So you need to keep that in mind. You, you can't fly on empty for very long, right? You can't fly on empty for very long. If you're not careful, eventually all of that joy you felt about your business and all of that joy you felt about your ministry, that zeal you had when you first started, that stuff is going to eventually begin to die out because you're running on empty. You run it on empty, right? You 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 start feeling bitter. You start feeling resentment. You feel almost like you're a slave. Um, you get to a point where you feel like, uh, as if the work hard, the harder we, the harder you work, the more work there is to do. Who wants to be in that situation? You know, you when you started your business and your ministry and your coaching and whatever else it is that you do, you know, it was about uh, uh, doing the right thing and benefiting other people and making transformation and people's lives as well as in your own but then you become overwhelmed you become distracted and now all of the stress is starting to pile on all because you have not been intentional about taking out time for yourself you're like that hamster in that you know in that little habit trail thing the little the little the little wheel that's going around and around and around but you're not going nowhere you're just going around in circles you're not getting anywhere you're not really making anything happen you're just spinning your wheels right so if you start being intentional about yourself Help routine, your self care routine, a regular self care routine is going to help you get to a place where you can avoid mental as well as physical exhaustion. Okay. You cannot be a shining example. And that's the thing, people. You can't be an example to everybody that you're out there trying to help if you're not following your own, your own, um, information, right? You can't help your family. You can't help your clients. You can't help your community because you're not actually modeling in the real world what you're telling them to do. All right. So you don't have a good physical or emotional well-being. So we're talking about a regular self-care routine that allows you to do better and be better. You don't want to be spinning your wheels anymore. And I promise you that if you start doing this and being intentional about it, you're going to be healthier. 
You're going to be happier and you're going to be more in love with your business, your ministry, your coaching practice, whatever it is that you're doing than you've ever been before. So um, let me let me just give you let me give you an example. I'm going to be give you a personal testimony. I remember some years ago sitting at my desk um, and you know, just doing work as usual, you know, doing work as usual, working on a budget and trying to figure out, you know, how I was going to get uniforms for the students and things like that. And, and, you know, what, what books needed to be ordered and what have you. And I noticed all of a sudden that I had sort of a, a, a numbness in my arm, you know, and I kind of ignored it. I didn't really think about it. I was like, oh, you know what? My arm is going to sleep. You know, my arm is going to sleep. Next thing I noticed was that I started feeling clammy. You know, I wasn't necessarily sweaty, sweaty, but I, I was feeling clammy. And, and, and I'm not the type of person that normally breaks out in a sweat. Now, you know, of course, now, you know, for other reasons that may occur, I might have a private summer or two, but I was 35 years old, y'all. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm breaking out in this, in this clammy kind of something or other that I had never witnessed before because it just wasn't me. I didn't sweat. Then I noticed that I was kind of having a little trouble breathing and my chest got a little tight. And being medically inclined, you know, I'm thinking to myself, listen, I'm 35 years old and I know better. I know that this is not what I think it is. I know that this is not the proper time for this to be happening. I'm 35. I know that this is not necessarily something that runs in my family. So what is really going on? And one of my coworkers who happened to be a doctor walked into the office and she looked at me and she said, you know, do you feel okay? Because you don't look too good. And I told her, I said, you know, I, I don't necessarily feel bad, but I, I don't feel like my usual self. So she took it upon herself to go ahead and call 911. 911 came. They um, they picked me up in an ambulance. They tried to do an IV. My, I have some really good good veins. You know, I, like I said, I teach medical students and sometimes I allow them to, to work with me. And the, any of them will tell you I have really good veins. And for whatever reason, they were unable to get a good vein that day in the ambulance. And they whisked me off to the, to the hospital. And I, I stayed in the hospital for like a day and a half. And prayerfully and gratefully and thankfully, it wasn't the worst. Because obviously the worst for me in my mind was that I was having a heart attack at 35 years old. However, the doctor did say it was a form of an anxiety attack. And he did share with me that if I did not begin to take care of myself, if I did not begin to look, listen to my body, when my body was telling me that I was tired, when my body was telling me that I was fatigued, when my body was telling me that I was even dehydrated, because that's one of the reasons why they couldn't uh, do a line in my vein, because I was dehydrated. If I did not begin paying attention to those things, then I would be back in that same hospital with a heart attack. So that is how important it is for you to take out the time to develop self-care routines, self-care routines. So one of the one of the things that I love doing and any of you that um, have have ever, that know me or have ever read any of my books or have ever talked to me or been in any of my other uh, trainings, you know that journaling is something that I've done for a long time. I've done I've journaled since I was a little girl. In fact, my mother would tell me all the time, girl, you're going to write your life away. <laughs> you're going to write your life away. And, I, and I've shared before that some of, of my best books have come from some of the journals that I wrote, you know, years ago, whether they were journals that directly were directly about things that I was dealing with, or they were journals about things that I had talked to um, other individuals about other issues that they may have been facing and my thoughts about about what they were dealing with and how better they could handle it. I have always journaled and it's always been an important part of my life. And and I know that there are a couple of type of types of people when we talk about journaling. There are some people who love the journal <laughs> and then there are other people that just don't. You know, I don't care what you do. I don't care what you say. They just they don't they're not going to like journaling, whatever it is. And, but the thing is that you don't have to look at it as a task. It doesn't have to be something that's well written or something that's going to eventually be published or something that even needs to make sense to anybody else. It's about uh, taking out the time to sit down and just write about your day, write about your feelings at that particular moment. If something is going on in your life right now, you'd be surprised how putting pen to paper, how cathartic that can be for you. So journaling is, 
you know, by far one of the best things that I could suggest to you when talking about a self-care routine. And, you know, I thought about it and I, I, you know, there are a lot of misconceptions about journaling. There are a lot of um, perceptions that people have about journaling, what it is and what it isn't. And I've also heard a lot of reasons why people don't want to journal. You know, first, first and foremost, I, I don't have time. I don't have time. And, you know, nowadays, because of the invention of technology, it doesn't even have to be a written journal. It can be a video log. It can be an audio log. It can just be you getting on your phone and pressing the record button and, and talking about your day or talking about how you feel about a situation you just dealt with or talking about your reaction to something that has just occurred. You know, especially when we're talking about everything else that's going on in the world right now. And it's impossible for you to be a part of this world and not have some feelings about what's happening. So even though you feel like you don't have time, you can just flip on your, your recording device and you can you can do that quickly. It doesn't have to be something, it doesn't even have to be something somebody else is gonna read. It's just you expressing your feelings in the moment. Um, there are other people that say they hate writing and they avoid it whenever possible. So I just gave you a couple of other ways that you could do it besides writing. Um, there are some people that mean to do it, but they forget. And that's okay. You know, it's not a, a, a hard, fast rule of thumb that you have to do this every, every day. But I say that it is a way to uh, release yourself of some of the feelings that you may have. Um, there are other people that may have started journals before and they've abandoned them. Some people may even feel like it's, uh, it's too much like the work they do in their business. Some people might feel like it's, it's a lot like the work they do in their business. Other people might feel like um, they counsel their clients and it feels like counseling. It may feel like counseling to them. And then lastly, they may, may feel like journaling is, is too introspective. They may not want to really delve that deeply into themselves. And it's okay. It's okay. If that's not for you, it's all good. So at this point, I am going to take the opportunity see here to go back and scroll really quickly for those of you listening if you want to get any information this is where you can download the handout for the webinar i'm going to scroll that really quickly for you if you want to download that before we go any further or you can hit me up on the inbox so let me see what you guys are saying out there i see that several of you have uh come on Jennifer, hey Jennifer, thank you. Jennifer says this is exactly what she needed to hear right now. I, yeah, I believe everybody needs to kind of hear this right now. We're in that 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 kind of funk, that kind of fugue state where we're really not sure what we need to do and where we need to go. Hey Zane, Zane Nixon said burnout is real. Yes, sir, it is absolutely. You are welcome for the re reminder that we need to rest and recharge and not feel guilty about it. Self care ain't selfish, y'all. Let me tell you that self care ain't selfish. You need to do it every now and then. And Carol Anderson Smith, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you for logging on tonight. All right, let's get back into what we're doing here. And here we go. All right. Okay. So, what what would your what would your journal include? What are some of the things that your journal can include? So, a powerful journal can include compliments that other people pay you. You know, you might want to write that down. Sometimes we don't know how important we are in other people's lives until they actually uh, show us some appreciation. You know, um, the ones that you really might want to write down are the ones that provide some validation. Now, I'm listen, let me tell you, I'm the first person to tell you that you don't have to get validation from other people. You are who you are and you're fearfully and wonderfully, wonderfully made. And that's awesome. But it doesn't hurt. If somebody wants to give you a compliment here and there, take the compliment and keep it going. Write it down. As a matter of fact, you can go back and use that in those moments when you're you're feeling as if nobody cares about you and what you're doing. Go back and reflect on those and remind yourself, you know what? Somebody benefited from what I'm doing. Somebody's life was transformed because of what I'm saying. Um, you can write down things that inspired you that day. You might see something on TV or you might see something 
in at, at your job or you might see something in the grocery store or you know something that that inspired you about your day the other day I, I saw on television where one little girl i think the little girl is about six or seven years old but she has been raising money to purchase groceries for the elderly people in her community that is an inspiration she's a little girl listen if she can do that can you think how much more we are we can do so writing those things down to encourage yourself and inspire yourself to go out and do something great. Um, tasks you forgot or remembered, you can write those down in your journal. Um, insight or ideas that you came up with, write those down. Listen, let me tell you, I have, like I said, I've been doing that all my life. I've been journaling all my life. And I know that I have gone back and I have looked at my journal two or three years down the line and I'm like, oh, that was good. That's good. Let me see. Did I follow through with that? If I didn't, let me go back and, and pick that up and, and, and make that happen. Let me make that manifest. So insights or ideas that you came up with. And then lastly, people are things that you are grateful for. And you know what? If you can't journal about anything else, this is a powerful, powerful piece. Journaling about people and things that you're grateful for because it's easy to dwell on all of the issues. It's easy for us to dwell on this pandemic. It's easy for us to dwell on the race relations that are going awry in our community and on police brutality. It's easy. But you know what? At the end of the day, there are some awesome, awesome things that I am grateful for. There are some things I'm grateful for. And, and, and reminding yourself of that can help to distance you from all of the other negativity that we're seeing on an ongoing basis, right? So these are just some ideas. You can even give your, uh, your journal um, some uh, focus. You can give it a theme if you want to just make it a gratefulness journal, if you can want to make it a goals journal. Um, if you go to Amazon.com and type in my name, Cheryl Lacey Donovan, you'll see that there are several journals available there um, that you can even utilize. It has, it has prompts in it to help you kind of think about, you know, in case you kind of stuck and don't know, well, what am I going to write about? There are prompts in some of those journals that help you to think about those things. And it, and it kind of reminds you of where you are, reminds you of who you are and who you are. Um, it doesn't have to have a particular format. It doesn't have to be spell checked. You are free to write. It's your journal. Do with it as you please. So how do you start? Um, you can spend about 15, 20 minutes every morning or in the evening or whenever you have time. You can do it uh, at your lunch break. And listen, right now, a lot of us have plenty of time on our hands to be able to start a journal. Right. You can do it. at You know, if you're still somebody that has to go to work every day, you can do it on your lunch break. Just just start writing and pour out all of your thoughts and all of your dreams and all of your goals on the page. Just write free form. Just right, just right. Whatever comes to mind, put that on the paper. And you'll be surprised how after you've done it for a week or a month or six months or a year, and you go back and you look at those things, you'll see, oh my goodness, I am in such a different place than I was then. Or maybe you're still in the same place. And then if you are, it's gonna make you think, okay, look, I need to be doing something different. If I was here one year ago and I'm still in the same place that I was in a year ago, I need to try to think of something else that I can do that can move me forward and stop keeping me stagnant. So it helps in all kinds of ways. And, you know, just scribble down whatever comes to you. Don't censor yourself. Don't censor yourself. So when the journal serves a couple of other functions, if you journal at the same time every day, it'll become a habit. That's why, you know, I say journal early in the morning, but if in the evenings is easier for you, that's great. If lunchtime is good for you, that's great. Um, just come up with a time that works for you. The longer you do it without any, without any interruption, the stronger the habit is going to become. You know, they say it takes, what, 21 days to create a habit. So if you do this for about 21 days, eventually it's going to become habit for you. And whether, it, whether you're writing or doing with video or doing with audio, just do it consistently. That's the thing, consistency. And it's going to also help you to discover some patterns and some preferences that you have. You'd be surprised. You say, oh, man, my goodness, I, I do this every day at the same time every day. Or or this is something that I've done consistently. Or, you know, why is it that I continue to get with the same types of groups of people? Or why do I get with the same woman? Or why do I get with the same man? You're journaling. You see, you begin to see those patterns and preferences. And it can help you do better and make different choices and decisions. Okay? All right. Let's move on to the next. 
Um, this just kind of gives you some ideas of what your, your journal can look like. It can be a bulleted journal where you put little bullet, bullets and identify, you know, certain topics that you want to talk about. Um, or you can do it as a to-do list. You know, to-do lists are great. It's just up to you. You journal whatever makes you feel better. Just start putting pen to paper. At the end of the day, start putting pen to paper. These are some examples of some places where you can get journals on Amazon.com. And remember, like I said, if you Google my name, there are some journals out there that I have created um, that are very specific. So gratitude journals, goals journals, ideas journals. But these are some some places that you can go and you can purchase the journals. Restore Her has journals that are empty that you can just pick up and just start writing in if you want to do it free form. So these are just some ideas for you. If you give journaling a fair trial and if you do it faithfully, and I, I mean faithfully, every day, every other day, once a week, whatever you come up with, you're going to improve your memory. Believe it or not, there are some studies that say it improves your memory. It's going to increase your creativity. It can help you retrieve and access ideas and information that you might have otherwise forgotten. And I told you that earlier. I've gone back in my journals and looked and said, oh, my goodness, I remember when I wanted to do that. And I wasn't able to do that right then. But listen, now I have the means and resources to do it. So let me go back and revisit that. Let me see how I can make that happen. Let me see how I can ma make that manifest in my life now. So it can help you remember some ideas and some things that you've forgotten. It'll remind you what you have to be grateful for. And that's probably the biggest thing that I, I find with, uh, with journals, especially if you do a gratitude journal. What are you grateful for? And it can also be a valuable reference. Um, these are some other things that journaling can do, and it, it can increase your emotional intelligence. Because what you'll find in those journals when you start writing them down is that what some of your triggers, what are the things that trigger you to have an emotional breakdown? What are some of the things that trigger you to be angry? What are some of the things that trigger you to be happy? Right. And you can see that when you start writing it down, you can go back and retrace it and identify what that looks like. It can remind you of your uh, goals, the things that you have been aspiring towards. It can keep you accountable to yourself. You know, everybody talks about having an accountability partner. Well, a journal can also be a way to keep you accountable. It can create self-discipline. And then it can also boost your self-confidence and your self-respect. So number two, the first thing, first thing, you know, finding ways to do some things to some self-care routines, even though you don't think you have time. First thing was journaling. Second thing, establish a quitting time and stick to it. Establish a quitting time and stick to it. <laughs> Establish a quitting time and stick to it. We spoke a little bit about the importance of consistency when journaling, especially the consistency of doing it at a specific time every day. One consistent habit you can add that is even easier to put into practice is creating a specific quitting time for yourself every day. How often do I see some of my colleagues and some of my counterparts popping up on Facebook or popping up on Twitter or some other places at two, three, four o'clock in the morning. Listen, establish a quitting time. Now, let me say this. If that's your start time, okay. But you then you that means you should have quit at eight o'clock the day before, right? Or you should have quit, quit at nine o'clock the day before. But if you're finding yourself consistently on a 24-7 schedule, and there's never a quitting time for you. And every time, you know, you, you think that you're about to stop, something else happens and distracts you and you write back at it again. You are not being fair to yourself. You are not giving yourself the kind of quality time that you need for you. And like I said earlier, you're going to eventually find yourself in a space where you are resentful, where you are bitter. And you're going to be thinking that you're pouring out good things to people. And you're really not because you burn out. You're really not because you just really don't have anything else of quality or anything else that's creative to give. So it's important to be intentional about setting a, a creating a specific quitting time for yourself every day and establish a solid quitting time that goes hand in glove with setting regular work hours. 
regular work hours. These are my work hours, eight to five, nine to six. Um, I'll never forget that, um, what was that, on Five Heartbeats, you know, that's become a, a black culture classic. <laughs> and he tells the guy, and what are my hours? What are my working hours? Nine to five. Y'all need to get that nine to five. And you can create them however you want them to be, but you need to come up with the quitting time and some regular hours. There's nothing more luxurious than clocking off without guilt, right? And you can clock out without guilt because you've established those times and it's okay. You know, I, I, I tell my students, you know, I'm available to you eight to 5.30 Monday through Thursday. And I'm available to you nine, I'm sorry, eight until 12 on Friday. Anything else is going to have to wait until I come back at eight o'clock on Monday morning. And that's it, unless it's some type of extreme emergency. If it's, and it, you know, then you have to decide, you have to determine, you know, emer emergency on their part is not necessarily count for an emergency on my part. And what I found is that nine times out of 10, if you leave people to their own devices, they'll figure out how to make it happen. They'll figure out how to make it work. They'll eventually think of a way get out of what they consider a crisis um, and realize that it really wasn't a crisis after all. Okay. So to make it tangible, here's an example. Decide on the time that you're going to power down your laptop, laptop every day. Okay. During the week. Decide on the time that you're going to power your laptop down every day during the week, whether it's seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, doesn't matter. No matter what, you're going to shut down that computer every day, every work day at seven o'clock, nine o'clock, eight o'clock, whatever it is. And then you have to do it. You have to follow through. Okay, follow through. Nothing else can be more important in the business world or more critical than you having um that, that will cause you to have to work every minute of the day. There's nothing in your ministry, nothing in your business, nothing in your coaching scheme, nothing that is important enough that you have to work every minute of every day. Now, do things pop up? Sure they do. But that shouldn't be a situation that you're dealing with every single day. You need to give yourself a couple of hours in the evening to unwind, perhaps hang out with family, and to hang out by yourself. That's important. That's important. So if that means that you have to start work earlier in the morning to do that, make it happen, right? A lot of us achieve a lot more in the early morning hours than we do during the rest of the day. So if you're a morning person, do what you have to do. If you're a mother with young children, you probably already know this, right? You already know, I need to go on and get everything I need to get done prior to these children waking up because when they wake up, they're gonna be demanding a lot of my time, especially now while many of you are working at home. So you need to be you need to prioritize and work out that schedule so that it creates balance for you in your life and so that you are able to better handle all of the situations that you're dealing with on a day to day basis. OK, um, listen, I there I can't stress the importance of having those couple of hours during the day where the silence is golden. Right. Where silence is golden. Uh, creativity happens. A lot of things get done when everybody, when, when there's just silence, okay? So try to make that happen. Um, so let me, let me give you this example. Let me give you this, this example. You're a coach, right? And you regularly allow your clients to push the envelope on their co consulting sessions. So you know that the consulting session is only supposed to last an hour or 45 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever that time frame is. But you have, you have some clients you know, that consistently want to push the envelope. Let, let's just say you have six clients in a day and you plan to work seven hours a day, right? And you want to, in that, you want to include a one and a half hour lunch and maybe maybe a half hour, you know, to, to do callbacks on the phone or if you have emergencies or whatever, read some notes, whatever the case may be. So if you have that as a schedule, you know already that it's, that it's important for you to stick to those one hour time slots, right? Or whatever your time slots are that your clients have booked. So you need to make sure that you make your clients aware of what that time frame looks like. Let them know, listen, if you were the person waiting on me for the next session, you know, you would want me to be there in a timely fashion, right? So it's important for you to be consistent with that and to set up those schedules and to create those specific quitting times and those regular hours that help you to maintain balance. Cause that's really where a lot of us get off kilter. 
that's really where a lot of us get outside of our balance is that we, you know, we may even sit down and make out the schedule, but then we say, oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll talk to XYZ for another 15 minutes, or maybe I'll work on this particular project for another 15 minutes or so. No, no. If you've created that schedule, then you need to stick to it. OK, even even if it's certain areas in your life, you need to make those boundaries. OK, you can't be too elastic with those boundaries because eventually you're going to have some ripple effects and that can have widespread consequences. OK. So learning to say no, that's a part of it. Learning to say no um, to yourself and to others, because if not, your business is going to spin out of control. If not, you're going to find yourself in a tailspin. And you're going to find yourself being burnt out. Okay, so be intentional about your quitting time and be intentional about your work hours and what those work hours look like. I know some people are saying, ooh, yeah, that's, a, that's easier said than done. But listen, you can do it. I believe you. You can do it. So this is a, um, this is a book that, that a good self-help book, help, self-help book that I have looked at. It talks about um, giving yourself and your, uh, give yourself and your boundaries a tune up. Okay. It's called, when I say no, I feel guilty. When I say no, I feel guilty. It's by Manuel J. Smith, um, Dr. Manuel J. Smith. And it's a good way to give yourself and your boundaries a tune up. Do not feel guilty about saying no. Matter of fact, in his book, he has something called the Assertiveness Bill of Rights. The Assertiveness Bill of Rights. Um, and and listen, it's <laughs> it's one of those things you need to read because it's OK. It's OK to tell people no. It's OK to tell people no. It's a great teaching tool. I think you can also get it in um, audio format as well through Audible. So if you're not the kind of person that wants to sit down and just read the entire book, or what have you, you can download it on Audible and listen to it that way. Um, it's an easy read and it's a great refresher on what assertiveness looks like, learning to say no. Okay. So number three, number one was journaling. Number two was establishing a quitting time and sticking to it. Number three is clear your calendar. Clear your calendar, clear your calendar. There's, there is not any need for you to have coaching calls five or six or seven days a week. No need to do that. Please don't do that. OK, clear your calendar. You need to have some time for yourself. And as a matter of fact, clear your calendar and write yourself in. Write yourself on your calendar and be intentional about keeping that appointment the same way you would keep that appointment if it was a coaching client or if it was somebody coming to your ministry to be counseled or if it was somebody to come into your business to buy products or whatever. Write yourself in on your calendar. Clear other stuff, other clutter off the calendar. Write yourself in and be intentional about keeping the appointment with yourself. Um, this is a great book to look at for that. It's, uh, uh, it's called Deep Work, Rules for Focused Success in a Distracted World. It is available on Amazon. I think it also comes in audiobook, audiobook as well on Audible. And um, in this book, what happens is Professor Newport cites a lot of examples of some of the top billionaires and business dynamos. And the thing that they, they let us know is that they understand the absolute importance of shutting off and shutting down. Listen, these are billionaires. These, these are people that are making lots and lots and lots of money, but they're saying that they know how important it is for you to shut off and shut down. That's the only way that you're going to be able to get back to your creativity and the only way that you're going to be able to recharge. You have to shut off and you have to shut down. Um, he also goes on to talk about in the book, two distinct and different styles of deep work. The monastic approach, which is where you literally retreat to a distraction free environment. You know, like, you know, I don't know if anybody wants to go to the mountains with the monks, but <laughs> that would be the kind of environment you're talking about. Or, you know, I. I that with my ladies we do a retreat um at least for the last few years we've done so and with that we're going to uh, uh camp allen which is in Navasota, texas not far from houston texas and it's a quiet place where you can get off by yourself if you want to and just go commune with nature commune with god you know write in your journal whatever it is you want to do or you can do the bimodal approach and that's for those people who are more luxury inclined where you want to go someplace where there's a spa and a 
golf course and you know other things that, that you really enjoy doing. And uh, you go there and you relax and, and just, but it's about being intentional and taking that time out for yourself. So if you can't lock yourself away from the world for one day to process your life, at least block off periods of time in your schedule. So if you can't get away and, and go to one of these retreats or go away to a spa or whatever the case may be, then at least take out the time and say, okay, for these two or three hours of, of the day, I'm going to disconnect. Or on the weekend, you may want to take a couple of hours on the weekend and say, I'm going to take these two or three hours um, this Saturday or this Sunday, and I'm going to disconnect. I'm going to do something that is my own personal time. I'm going to do something that is my own uh, private time to allow me to get away from all of the other foolishness that's going on in my life and going on around me. Um, so, <laughs> so you know, and, and, and this is something that we also have to say is that sometimes when you do that, uh, one of the unnecessary, unfortunate side effects of it is that you may have some ne necessary jobs to pile up, but at the end of the day, it's okay. Because now that you've had an opportunity to step away and clear your mind, you can go in and, and, and better reflect and deal with the situations that are arising. All right, now we're moving on to number four. And we are almost done. And this is something even even scripture talks about meditating. And I know sometimes when people look at the word meditation, they think about, you know, uh, chants and, 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 all, and all kinds of other stuff. But in, in, in the Bible, it talks about meditating on the word. So for me, when I take out my time to meditate, a lot of times it's meditating on the word of God, meditating on scriptures that are affirmational type scriptures that build me up. Like I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and what that looks like for me. What does it look like when I say all things? You know, that that's a big word. It doesn't say some things, it says all things. Or when the word tells me that I'm not just a conqueror, but that I, that I am more than a conqueror. What does that mean? That means that I there are a lot of things that right now might seem difficult for me, but at the end of the day, if I'm more than a conqueror, ultimately I'm going to be able to conquer and, and surpass and, and go, go over those obstacles that are in the way. Or when I think about things like don't grow weary in well-doing because in due season, you know, you'll reap a harvest of blessings. And that, that reminds me that right now, you know, I may feel like I'm doing all of these excellent things, all of these wonderful things. And, you know, it might look like nobody is being transformed. Nobody is being reached. Nobody is, is appreciating what I'm doing. And then all of a sudden I may get, you know, while I'm meditating on that, I may get a word from somebody that says, thank you so much for what you've done, or thank you so much for the word that you shared. But so meditation is something that everybody can do. It doesn't matter what your faith is, it doesn't matter what your mindset is, but it is something that you can easily do. And even if you're not meditating on scripture, there are affirmations. I have um, affirmations that I post consistently in various places that you can meditate on those affirmations. And then once you get down to the bottom of the affirmations, there are some, some self-reflection questions that you can ask yourself and help help you to better understand the affirmation that you're you're repeating and meditating on. And one thing I do know is this, that true meditation is transformative. It helps you to banish the chaos the go that's going on in your mind. And it helps you develop more clarity when you, when you get into meditation. Now, I, you know, I'm aware of six different types of, of meditation that are available. They range in, you know, they're all kinds of, of, of areas from Eastern spiritual focus to a strictly practical physical focus. But I will tell you this. I know that meditation is something that that is truly miraculous in transforming the way that you think and transforming your mindset. And if you are intentional about doing that on a regular basis, it can create a, a man change that is beyond your imagination. It is. I, I just think it's very important. And you only have to do about five minutes a day. You can just sit down for five minutes a day and, you know, inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale and just think about the goodness of God or think about, you know, the scriptures or the affirmation that you've decided to recite that day. And it can really help your concentration levels and bring back creativity. It, it can, you know, if your day is busy doing that five minutes in the morning can create a totally different trajectory for your day. You know, if you've gone into the office and by lunchtime, 
all hell seems to have broken loose, take that first five minutes of your lunch break and just sit down and just breathe intentionally, paying attention to your breathing and think about that scripture that you wanted to meditate on during the day or that positive affirmation and it can truly transform where you are. Um, yeah. So, so that's number, number, where were we? Number four, meditate. And I really recommend that meditate. When you do that, these are some of the benefits. You, your stress is reduced. Um, any anxiety that you may be feeling can be reduced. Uh, there are some studies out there that say it can even boost your immunity. And who can't do with some immunity boosting right now, right? With everything that's going on in our community right now. Um, insomnia, insomnia, those of you that suffer with insomnia, uh, dealing with meditative practices can help reduce your insomnia. And it can also reduce high blood pressure, reduce high blood pressure. These are some other benefits, inflammation reduction, um, improving mental clarity. I know that for a fact. Uh, it can increase your attention span. It can increase your ability to focus and concentrate. It definitely encourages positive thinking because if you're meditating on scripture or affirm positive affirmations, there's no way that after you've done that for a, a series of days or even a series of times throughout the day that your thinking will not be different. Um, it can increase your alertness and it can also improve your well-being. So we've gotten down to number five. Number five, consciously avoid the negative. My goodness, consciously avoid the negative. And the first thing that comes to my mind when I think about this is, is um, uh, toxic people, toxic relationships and getting rid of people that, you know, they're only around and are attached to you because they're there to suck out every bit of positivity you have. And that, that can even include uh, ladies and gentlemen, your coaching clients. So you have to even be discerning and use wisdom when dealing with coaching clients. If, if your coaching client is consistently coming back to you with the same stuff over and over again, and you provided them you know, with activities and resources and tools to do something different and do something better, and they still are coming back with the same thing, then you might need to rethink um, as whether or not you are the right coach for them or whether or not they need counseling as opposed to coaching, right? And so I just threw that out there for free. I like to say that, threw it out there for free because, you know, that can even be a big thing in, in, in the coaching and counseling arena. So so what happens? What, what, um, when you're practicing self-care by consciously avoiding the negative, what does that look like? Well, first of all, stop reading watching and listening to the news. Huh? Can, I, can I hear somebody say amen on that one, especially right now? Because here's the thing you have to recognize, those this 24 hour news cycle that we find ourselves in now is designed to be sensational. It's designed to be controversial, uh, dramatic. It's even designed to be biased in some ways. And I, I'm gonna date myself again and tell you this. I remember the time when you would, uh, when it got to be about 11, 12 o'clock at night, your, your your TV started playing the national anthem. And then as soon as that was off, it was nothing but static, right? <laughs> and so you didn't have a choice but to detach yourself from whatever was going on on the television because it shut it off for you. Well, now we have these 24 hour news cycles and any at any given moment, any given time, you can go in and you'll, you can see all of this stuff, but you have to be aware that it's designed to be sensational, right? And there, you know, I, I, I don't want to just throw everybody under the bus. There are still some journalists out there who are dedicated. Some of them out there have some integrity. But a lot of the news that we see right now, a lot of it is, is intended to be um, exploitive. It's intended to be salacious. A lot of times they have these particular slants out there that they, they try to put on the news. So it, it's a lot of it is very negative. It, it's really very negative. And, and it lives off of heartbreak and disaster. Right. So, you know, when you're when you're looking at the news and what have you, just keep in mind that it's one thing for you to want to be well informed. Right. But you can do that easily without consistently viewing all of the traumatic images and and all of the stuff that's been shared and listen to people talk about it in circular conversation. Right. They're continuing to talk about it over and over and over again. If you watch some of the news programming, you know, they'll have one story. And every journalist, every individual that comes on that one channel, 
He's going to talk about that same story, but every one of them is going to put a different slant on it. Every one of them is going to come at it from a different angle, but it's still the same negative stuff. So stop reading, watching, and listening to the news. Listen, news, uh, what is it? Netflix and and uh, Hulu and all of those other things, all of the um, cable network television, all of that, those things can actually be a great diversion <laughs> from sitting up and watching that stuff. Because I watch my Food Network, I watch my, you know, watch my my um, game show television, it's anything to just kind of disconnect from the negativity. Um, stop watching negative TV shows, you know, stop, TV shows that are going to put negative thoughts in your mind. Um, turn down invitations to hang out with friends if you know that they're negative, right? You you know who those people are. You know the ones that, that, that are always negative Nancys. Every time you talk to them, there's always an issue. Every time you get with them, there's always a problem. Um, and and it's, it's okay. It's okay for you not to accept invitations from them. You can you can turn them down and, and say things like, it's not going to work for me this, this Saturday, or just simply tell them no. Tell them, no, thank you. I'm going to do something different, right? And you don't have to hurt their feelings while you're doing it, but turn down those negative invitations. When you know those people are negative, don't spend a lot of time around them or with them. Unfollow the whiners on social media. Unfollow the whiners on social media. Come on, y'all. You know what I'm talking about. I, and, you know, I get it. Some of them, and it's, I hate to put this out there, but it's true. Some of them are, in, some of them are entertaining. Yeah, yeah, they are. But then some of them just tire you out. Right. Some of them just leave you just tired and you're like, oh, my God, really? Is it nothing ever happening on in a life that's great? Um, so you can just can unfollow those people, unfollow them, block them, whatever you need to do. Um, if they're consistently out there talking about things that that are, are selfish or things that are not selfish, but things that are negative, you don't want to be a part of that consistently. Right. And it's not selfish to do that. It's really not selfish to do that. Number five, ditch the negative self-talk. Ditch the ne negative self-talk. Don't, trust me, there are plenty of people out there that have no problem putting you down. So you don't need to go out there and put yourself down. I'm just saying, right? So ditch the negative self-talk. Find, like I said, go back to those positive affirmations. And when you start feeling that negative self-talk pop up in your head, go back and, and, and think about some of those scriptures that you want to meditate on and think about some of those positive affirmations that you've been saying over and over again and remove that. The Bible talks about casting down those vain imaginations and everything that exalts itself over the word of God. So if the word of God says that you're more than a conqueror and something inside of you is saying, no, you're not, then yeah, that's exalted. So cast that thing down. With, with what the Bible, with the Word of God has to say, or what your positive affirmations have to say, and then lastly, it's okay every now and to pay every okay every now and then to pay yourself a compliment. You know, you don't have to be uh, a narcissistic with it. You don't have to compliment every now and then. It's okay if you know that you're doing something good in the world and you're showing up as your best self in the world. It's fine for you to pay yourself a compliment. So here's how you bring in the positive. Enjoy and acknowledge well-deserved praise. And I know a lot of us, for a lot of us, that's not easy to do. We're not used to, um, you know, receiving. You know, we're used to giving, 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 and not so much to receiving. But it's okay to acknowledge the praise that you receive. And then do something nice for others. You'd be surprised how doing something nice for others can make you feel a hundred times better right? A hundred times better because there's always somebody in a situation or in a position that's worse off than you. So how do you pay internal homage to those who helped you? Well, one, you can pick a charity and volunteer your time as well as your money. You can mentor somebody else that's starting out in your area of expertise. That's always an excellent way to pay it forward. Give your team members some swag or treat them to lunch just because. Right. Send them a cash out. You know, I think uh, in our restore her group, that's something that I think that we're going to start doing on maybe a monthly basis where we just pick random people and, you know, everybody just bombard them with 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 nice stuff. Cash. It doesn't have to be a lot. Five dollars. It might be, you know, a gift card to Starbucks or something. I don't know. But just to let people know that you're thinking about them and, you, and you're paying homage to them. Uh, sponsor a child or a special needs adult for summer camp. That would be awesome. And lastly, contribute to a worthy cause in a meaningful way. Contribute to a worthy cause in a meaningful way. So 
We've gone over the five ways that we can practice regular self-care, even if we don't think we have time. The first one was to be able to start a journal, start journaling, whether it is a written journal, a video journal, or an audio journal. Uh, number two, right? Number two was to establish a quitting time and stick to it. Number three was to clear your calendar. And as you're clearing your calendar, to also make sure that you um, include yourself on that calendar for some personal time. Number four is to meditate. And number five is to consciously avoid the negative. So why did I do all this? I did all of this because I actually have uh, something that I want to talk to you about as well. Um, we can. This has been great. But there is a way for you to dig even deeper into this. Um, we can do it together or you can do it on your own. It's called the Physical, Emotional and Spiritual Self-Care Boot Camp for Entrepreneurs, Ministry Leaders and Coaches. And it has been an amazing uh, work for me. That's why I am introducing it to you. I did the boot camp myself and it opened my eyes to a lot of things. It opened my eyes to a lot of areas where I was not um, treating myself as well as I should. And as a result of that, I was not showing up for other people in my life the way that I should because I was, was um, not as clear, didn't have as much clarity as I needed to have. I was not as creative as I could have been, even though I, you know, I, I, I pride myself on being someone that is pretty creative. But, you know, when you get into some of those um, areas where you haven't been taking care of yourself, you, you get kind of dull on that. So it's called it's called physical, emotional, spiritual self-care for entrepreneurs. And um, here's what it's all about. It's a, a four module self-training program. Um, it has an action plan that you can implement with each module. It has exercises and worksheets that can help you define your plan. And, and one of the things that I, I, I am offering up initially is for you to be able to go out and do a uh, one on one one on one. Um, initial strategy session with me, a free strategy session where we get together, we look out, look at all of the things that you're doing in your life, all of the appointments and schedules and all the other stuff you have going on and try to identify a way to carve out some time for you so that you can be the best you that you can possibly be. So right here is the address that you can go to. It's on my Facebook page, um, my Cheryl Lacey Donovan Facebook page, not the personal profile, but the business page. You can make an appointment for that free strategy session. And that's how we'll get started. We'll talk about, you know, all of the things that you're doing in your life and what we can do to help you get to a place where you are more balanced in your life and where you are taking better care of yourself physically, emotionally, and spiritually. It's a boot camp. Um, this is module one is about the whole body entrepreneur. This, this module is about understanding what is really possible if you nurture the whole you. We look at the signs of burnout. We look at the signs of stress. We look at why um, self-care may be eluding you because a lot of people may not even recognize or understand why it is that they are just not able to get to that place where they can take care of themselves. So we look at all of that in module one. Um, what what you need to do when success keeps slipping through your fingers, why you're stuck in distraction and how to get back on track and claim the life you dream of. That's that's all in module one. Module two is about a strong and healthy body because a strong and healthy body makes good business sense. You can't go around doing your best. Right. And and you're not feeling good. You know, you, you're tired. You're drawn out. You, you know, you're you're having to drink coffee and take five hour energy drinks in order to um, wake yourself up and be alert in certain situations. But is that really the way that you want to uh, be with your clients, with your your minister, minister, other people of your ministry team? I don't think so. So we look at that in module two. Module three is your emotional well-being. Oh, my goodness. How to set boundaries. My gosh. How many of us <laughs> don't, don't set boundaries? I, listen, I can raise my hand and tell you that there has been a time in my life where I did not set boundaries, especially with myself. So with this module, we look at, okay, what are your deal, deal breakers? You know, what are they and how do you handle them? 
how do you handle clients from hell? And we all know we have them. We talked about it earlier. The clients that come to you and the total time they're with you, all they do is talk about their problems. It's never, never a, a breakthrough for them. And we also look at some painless ways to divest yourself of energy vampires and complainers. You know who I'm talking about. And then lastly, we look at uh, module four, creativity comes from the soul. And this is where we look at finding your deepest and most satisfying motivations. Okay. So as a result of working with me, this is what, what I try to do with everybody that comes into uh, it comes to me for mentoring or coaching. I try to help them, you know, look inside themselves, be introspective, identify those things that are keeping them from getting to where they need to go. You know, if there are places of unforgiveness, if there are places where they are not being truthful with themselves, we look at all of that, you know, and then sometimes that can be painful, right? Sometimes that can be painful, but at the end of the day, it's a benefit to you. We also help you to discover your emotional profile, um, look at the six things to put back in your life and how to tap into your tr true creativity when your well has totally run dry. So if you're ready to learn how to get rid of your past self-sabotaging habits, if you're ready to learn how to find out why self-care is hard to put into practice and what you can do to change that, or if you're ready to learn um, how to uncover strategies and tips that make self-care guilt-free, um, if you want to know how to become the successful coach or businesswoman or ministry leader you've always wanted to be, or if you just want to set yourself up to enjoy a rich and fulfilling life instead of knocking yourself flat with unproductive overwork, then you need to contact me. Go to my website, go to my Facebook site, and make an appointment with me for that initial strategy session. We'll talk about that. It's free, and we'll look at the next steps. We'll look at what you need to do next in order to move yourself forward. And looking at that piece of Self-care, not being selfish. At the end of the day, self-care is not selfish. So right now, what I want to do is if there's anybody that has a question, this is time for any questions that you may have of me. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask them. And if not, I want to thank you for joining me here this evening. Hopefully you will get with me and we'll be able to talk a little bit about this further, what self-care looks like um, and uh, help you to get to that place where you recognize that self-care isn't selfish. It really, it really is not. I, again, I'm Cheryl Lacey Donovan. Uh, you can go to, let's see, let me get this up here really quickly. Go to my Facebook page, Cheryl Speaks Now. There is a place for you to schedule an appointment with me if you'd like to do so. And we could talk about this further and look at ways. You know, and it might not even be these five. These are just five that, that I picked up that I thought were really good ones. You don't have to do them all. You can do one or more of them. Feel free to do so. And there may be other things that perhaps you might want to do that can help you look at your self-care more effectively. Thank you so much for joining me, and I look forward. Uh, go to my website, it's CherylSpeaks.org, CherylSpeaks.org. Let me see if I can put that down here in the comments. To find out other things that we are doing. There you go, CherylSpeaks.org. We also have the Restore Her Movement that's going on right now. We're doing some really amazing things with Restore Her Movement. Um, one of them is A Mother's Cry, where we are creating an agenda and some strategies that we want to send out to police departments, uh, commissioners, courts, city council members, what have you, to look at this whole issue with um, police brutality and holding them accountable. Yeah, we can vote. It's awesome. We can go out and vote, but we also need to hold the people that we vote for accountable to doing things that are going to effectuate change within our communities. And if we don't give them agenda, then there's nothing to hold them accountable to. So you will, we will be posting all of that on our site um, and posting it on all of our Facebook pages as well. Um, RestoreHerMovement.org, join the movement. We have a place for you to be able to go out and do that also. Um, we also have a an online community that you might want to join. We also are on Facebook. So look us up. Restore Her um, Healing, Enlightenment, and Renewal. So again, I thank you for joining me here this evening. Um, it has been truly a pleasure to be with you here today. And as always, I just want to remind you that God can do exceedingly and abundantly more than you could ever ask or think 
according to the power that works in you. Be blessed.